And it really took me on a ride there. I had no idea how they were going to come back in from that. And the handoff back into that reprised chorus where the bass was kind of joining in on the riff, it was kind of slowing down. That was really well done. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowend University. The Wicked End is from Avenge Sevenfold's third studio album, City of Evil, released in 2005. This is another band I just kind of wrote off early on and didn't give a proper chance, a proper listen. I think I was shown their music a little prematurely. Something from the first or second album, I believe. They were a bit more metalcore back then, and it was just way too much for me at the time. This is kind of early 2000s. I wasn't quite into metal earnestly by that point. And many years go by and I didn't really give them another chance until Nightmare came out because Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater had played on that record. I'm a huge Dream Theater fan. It's well documented here on the channel. And then several months later, he left Dream Theater. And I think the whole reality of that was just too much of a bummer to really you know, check out anything further than that. So I'm excited to go back and just give this band another chance. I've never thought they were much of a bass focused band. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of requests for The Wicked End uh, featuring Johnny Christ on bass. So it'll be good to kind of sit down and give them a proper critical listen. So let's do it. Without further ado, here's The Wicked End from Avenge Sevenfold. <laughs> Can't recall a single Avenged Sevenfold song out of the few I've heard that had that uh, the bass that up front. Very nice. Very nice request. I don't know if this will come back. As I always say when there's a bass intro like this, I want to hit it a couple times because I never know. Okay. Something kind of chromatic here. Let me hear that again. It's going fast. Almost sounds like a a chops exercise out of an instructional book. Just going between multiple strings, kind of an irregular grouping. Might kind of throw off your picking pattern. Of course, I've never known if uh, Johnny Christ uses a pick or has been finger style. No idea. And in these genres, it can be kind of hard to tell. Both can sound like either, depending on the player, their gear. But what a cool little opening lick there. <laughs> It always goes back every other time to, you know, there's a regular patterns always throw me off of these videos because I can't make any assumptions, but that's really cool. And it kind of has a happier sound, kind of like an E major sound, but then it jumps into this riffing here down in D, D minor. Okay, see where this goes. Those guitar, those leads are like so vocal, like the sliding kind of the inflection. And I've always known their guitar players were uh, phenomenal. You always, I always saw them in Guitar World magazine. And I think the way they used to be dressed, probably back then, I was like, nah, I don't know if that's for me. But this was also almost 25 years ago now. Nice switch up. Big regal kind of playing around with the harmonic minor sound, uh, which was very typical for bands back then. Uh, I was huge into Trivium. I think Trivium was the band that kind of got me into the sound. Um, a friend showed me the Crusade, and I think it was just something about Matt Hafey's clean and harsh vocals at the time that... I couldn't stand the harsh vocals for a while. The cleans kind of got me through the door, and then I slowly went back and listened to like Ascendancy. And I think whatever song I heard from these guys was just really intense. So I know all of you out there have bands like that, right? You know, you just, you were shown the wrong song at the right time. It just wasn't the right time to get into that band. I think this band is kind of that way with me because everything I'm hearing is like, I listened to a lot of the other bands that sound like this who 
of N Sevenfold probably influenced. So that's what's kind of great about doing this channel, going back and just kind of turning some of those stones uh, from many years ago. But nonetheless, they're playing around with that harmonic minor sound, which is the raised seven in a minor scale. And it gives it that regal sound with a lot of tension on that top seventh note. And the riff, I think, even outlines something similar, like a Phrygian dominant sound. It's going by fast. We have to hear it a little more. In the sort of halftime chorus. Is that a flat major two? My ears really used to that D minor harmonic minor thing. They just kind of pulled the rug out from under me there. How cool. Back to this. Flat major two, I believe. We're in D minor, go up a half step to E flat major, and then kind of playing that sound to F major, which is back in the original key. But it almost has that flat major six sound, which is flat major six, flat major seven, one sound, which is. But they went. D major. Then they did this little diminished turnaround to get back to the darker minor sound. Okay, that, that's a real tense moment, uh, pulling you out of where your ear's been used to in that sound, taking a kind of detour. I like when bands do that and it's, it sounds natural still. Okay, we got a seven minute song, let's let this go. Okay, this riff. this. Good progression. Okay, back to that uh, twist again. I believe that was a double chorus and a subtle thing's happening. The bass is a lot quieter than it was in the intro. Very curious how that might <clears throat> be reprised. We have a ways to go, but I just wanted to comment on this because it's really important. This approach on bass can be used in the lightest of jazz songs and the heaviest of metal songs. Anytime a song section repeats, if you change the bass part, typically if you call section one, like verse one or chorus one, and then you have a verse two or a chorus two. If you just add more movement in the bass part, it automatically just brings the entire energy level up for the piece. Not the whole song, but it really pushes into the next part and adds some energy. And if you hear what he's doing on the chorus there, this first chorus here, he's just kind of hugging the roots. Big, solid, epic chorus. Dun, 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 dun. You know, real basic stuff, which is key for a chorus right here. Yeah. You know, just keeping it straight. Next course, he adds some movement. Same progression, just kind of gluing the chords together a bit more. 
passing tones, kind of using more scale notes to get from one note in the scale up to another note in the scale, which is all around the D minor scale. whatever. A little bit more movement can take that second chorus. It can differentiate it from the first one. And the only thing different is the bass part adding movement gives it a little more energy, which can make the next section kind of roll in with a bit more impact. Subtle stuff, but again, works in the heaviest of genres to the lightest ones. It's just kind of a bass player's a really good tool to have. To this. Okay, where are we going? Sweep it. Nice. I always, uh, the only reason I wished I might have played guitar, and there aren't many, I love being a bass player, but just to get a sweet picking thing down to use it in a solo. I think growing up with, as I mentioned, Dream Theater, Petrucci was, you know, always throwing that stuff in. I love the sound of it, just the, the timbre of a sweet picked arpeggio. I love watching people play it. It's a fun technique. And, you know, the best you can really do on bass is, without getting too muddy, is just sort of a kind of a three string thing. Cause you, know, you start getting down here too much and it just gets a little muddy. So I love hearing that done well. Again, I've always known their guitar players uh, were just simply shredders. They really were pioneering that dual lead kind of thing when this sound started coming up in the early 2000s. Uh, I do know that much because I, I did subscribe to Guitar World. Okay, where are we going now? Mellow breakdown. Oh, wow. Expect this. Must be a side of the band I have missed. What an epic just interlude there. A lot of good. I'm not going to go back and dissect all that. We did some, some key changes and a lot of diminished stuff. It was all just really beautifully written. Very symphonic, of course. The way it came back in is kind of what surprised me the most. I, th I think... I think I was expecting the just come back in with that main riff. Just something fast. Just to kind of like... Just the contrast to kind of cut it. But it was such a smooth handoff into that groove where the drummer came in on the ride cymbal. I don't know, so just a really smooth handoff back into the song. Wow. Okay. Got nothing. That was pretty epic. I want to hear the tail end of that and see what the rest of the song has in store. Yeah, right here. Up a half step.
very smooth. C, C major, C sharp major, D minor. Almost kind of the diminished walk up there, so this kind of thing. Very smooth, and now we're back in the original key we started in. And the bass has some movement here. Okay, here we go. Love this. It's like a real drawn out version of that chorus from earlier. It's like a reprise. I love a good reprise. That's really well done. The bass has kind of come in and it's almost like a walking bass line with a single note riff. Whatever that was, a little triplet thrown in there that just has a real swagger to it at this tempo. Building it back up, okay. You know, this almost has an overture in reverse kind of concept going on. The first half of this song you had your typical song structure, right? There's there's some little twists and turns. We had a verse, we had a big chorus, then we had this kind of interlude symphonic orchestral thing. Now they're kind of cutting those sections shorter and kind of bunching them up together. We came back in with kind of a reprised version of the chorus that just was at the perfect tempo to have the bass kind of go along and double the riff, note for note. That's what it sounded like. Went back into the verse that was shortened because the verse previously was like, Kind of had a bit more space between those notes. If you listen to this riff right here, it's kind of like condensed. It's like a sped up version. Now we're back into the chorus. So an overture in, a, in an orchestra movement, a piece, it's, it's kind of like a brief overview of everything you're about to hear. Uh, that's kind of why they were written. This is kind of like doing it in reverse as the song ends. Kind of how that hits me anyway. Let's start here. It's been a pretty epic listen. Yeah, see how this riff is shortened? Right back into the chorus. Okay. to improvise over. Yeah, now he's adding back the movement. That, that's a really fun progression to kind of just ad lib over. Ever since I heard him start doing it in the song, kind of gluing the chords together, it's kind of a fun exercise just to play along with a loopable chord progression and practice just picking different ways to get from one note in the scale to the other in an allotted amount of time. It's kind of the approach he's taking, and it does add some energy here again, taking the song out in the final 15 seconds. Yeah. 
Okay. This is definitely a much more ideal time to get into this band. All these years later, and there's so many bands and songs I would have never listened to had it not been for you guys requesting songs. And you know, I try to be really careful on this channel not to say I love everything. I don't love everything I review, and it's not about whether I like it or not. I just feel I can always try to find something unique about a band that is objectively unique to them and like that, but maybe not just really care for the band as a whole. But I really like this a lot more than what I remember hearing. You know, this is an earlier snapshot of their sound, whereas I guess Nightmare would be five years older than this. And I love what I heard on that. But I was just kind of listening more for just to, just to see what Mike Portnoy did on something like that. I was kind of listening for the wrong reasons even then. But that middle interlude section really surprised me. I was kind of thinking, how are they going to stretch this kind of D minor verse chorus thing out for seven minutes? And it really took me on a ride there. I had no idea how they were going to come back in from that. And the handoff back into that reprised chorus where the bass was kind of joining in on the riff, it was kind of slowing down. That was really well done. Okay, you know, really like what I heard. Great guitar playing. That bass intro didn't come back. Might have just been sort of an intro thing. Maybe it was coming out of something in a previous song and on album. That tends to happen a lot. But this has been my uh, jumping back in to Avenge Sevenfold many, many years later. So thanks to those of you who have requested The Wicked End. If you'd like to support the channel further, come find us on Patreon. We have a really great community over there. I'm very grateful to have already. And we'd love to have you. I have tons of bass lessons and educational content. I also do full album reactions based off of songs I do on YouTube. It'll be a great time. Come swing by. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I love you all. We'll see you next time.